So if I could kind of qualify that a little bit, you look at an, a, a painting of an apple, right? But yeah. you can't taste it, you can't smell it. You can't obviously um, do anything with it. You're just supposed to look at it's it and appreciate visual. it as an as an aesthetic experience. Right. And uh, then there's, of course, the famous example of this, the painting called The Treachery of Images by René Magritte. Uh -huh. And his, his painting basically is a very well-rendered pipe, mm -hmm. and underneath it, it has a text. And mm -hmm. the text is in French, and it says, this is not a pipe, right? Uh -huh. So you're thinking, well, it is. What else is it, an elephant? Right? So, But it really deals with this nuance of... You know, obviously you can't smoke that pipe. So where's the slip here? What's the illusion? The illusion is that the project or the image purports to be something that it actually isn't. Yeah. So how I would tie that in with the uh, Pico National Network installation by Seth and Hannah Gravette is that you would look at all those images and you say, well, those people look pretty affluent or well-to-do or oh, prosperous. Yeah. Oh, wow, they don't. They don't have health care or they don't have enough to keep up with the bills. So there's this illusory aspect um, to all of these projects and particularly in political remix video. Uh -huh. um, but I've always been very inspired by Friedrich Nietzsche's argument that uh, we should understand art in terms of it being sort of like a creative lie. Right, it, uh -huh. it presents this illusion, and if you actually discern out what's happening in the illusion, uh -huh. you'll see way, way bigger things. Uh -huh. And so that's uh -huh. that's really what I'm interested in in my own art practice. And then when I see that happening in the way other people produce, I immediately gravitate to it. Oh yeah. So, in terms of political remix video, uh, you have to affirm some type of a aesthetic deception because you're you're taking copyrighted appropriated imagery be it a newscast or a blockbuster film something that's uh -huh. out in the mainstream uh -huh. and you're cutting it up reconfiguring it butting different things together yeah. and usually the intention is to subvert the original message that is part of the source material so what i really really like is that obviously the original context don't say these things the things that the artist is, is now reconfiguring into the, the new work. That the new video artist The new is video saying, yeah. takes on a whole different political posture. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And so I, I really like that there's some type of a scandal happening in that, in that gesture. And uh, it's, very, it's also very Nietzschean, I think, in that, in that regard. The creative lie is very prevalent there. How do you mean? Well, for example, if I um, can kind of plug my my most recent remix that i made uh, -huh. uh jake gyllenhaal is in two films that i'm uh, really fond of donnie darko and jarhead mm -hmm. and i wanted to create a different discussion around the nobel peace prize award uh, acceptance speech that president obama recently made okay. i was very outspoken against the iraq war and the afghanistan mm -hmm. war and um and try to make videos to that effect that would speak against these these war efforts and so i wanted jake gyllenhaal's character to kind of go through a metamorphosis similar to bradley mason in some ways that he started off saying no brock i don't really like how you're talking about oh, peace is the only way i gotta tell you that was some of the worst advice i ever heard and the central um, ideas of all major religions is that we do unto others as we would have, have them do unto us i don't believe in that i'm very proud to serve my country yeah that was the basic premise in the very front of the video. But as he goes off to um, fight overseas, I use some imagery of Jarhead that depicts that, he starts to see the brutality of war, and he starts to kind of go through a change in his thinking. Mm -hmm. So towards the end, there's a great sequence in Donnie Darko where he's sitting down and he's going through a therapy session, and he says uh, this exact phrase, No. That's stupid. And so I get Obama trying to articulate his defense of war at a Nobel Peace Prize acceptance <laughs> <laughs> speech, right? Oh, irony. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And so he's, he, Obama is arguing for war. Yeah. And, accepting uh, a peace prize. Accepting a peace prize. And so I'm trying to highlight the, the irony there with uh, Jake's rebuttal saying, no, I, I just don't believe in that. It is very important for, I think, those of us who desperately want peace to understand that sometimes war is also necessary. No. That's stupid. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's where the creative lie is taking place because obviously these two people didn't sit down right. and have a discussion, right. but the illusion is there that they did. Uh -huh. And so it recontextualizes and reconfigures the original messages of that 
Hollywood film and that that speech. Uh huh. So taking the two separate things and then integrating them, making it in a way that says something that you want them to say. Exactly. Uh, Which provides political commentary and and critique, and hopefully prompts more discussion. Uh huh. It, it kind of reminds me of like a, a an actual way to do what. Rick and I talk about sometimes and what he says he used to think about when he was a kid. I wish I could make these people on TV say what I want them to say right now. Like, exactly. I wish I had the power to make them say this funny thing or this uh, uh, illuminating thing. So that's really what you're doing is you're making, you're taking something that a lot of times it's used for a propaganda purpose. Right. Like as in advertising or as in the news or whatever it is, and managing to insert your own message or at least making people look at it in a certain way that kind of takes away the power of that propaganda, maybe? Yes, uh-huh. precisely. There's two absolutely phenomenal artists at this, much better than I am at doing it. Uh, Elisa Kreisinger, who's done a whole bunch of remixes of the Sex and the City show uh-huh. Uh-huh. and then Jonathan McIntosh who we're going to actually have on hand to present his work in person which oh, is a, cool. an amazing situation for us I uh-huh. think because he's he's so well spoken and um, his work is very very good he did a fantastic wow. remix of the 2008 Senators presidential Obama debates with So You Could Think You Can Dance TV show <laughs> And uh, so you actually have these judges critiquing and judging the uh, statements that are made by Obama and McCain. And it's just, it's very funny, too. But then they're fluid. judged. They have the judges commenting on their speech, on, right. their, on their debate. And those, those oh, judges really bring a sledgehammer, too. I mean, they're very uh, honest. To live out their dreams. And that is something that I'm going to be committed to as President of the United States. These things, we've got to drill offshore, my friends, and we've got to do it now. <laughs> So that's um, Jonathan McIntosh is coming to Gallery 25, and you're going to be showing one of his remixes, or I a couple at, of his at remixes. At that point, I'll, since he'll be present with us, I'll turn uh-huh. it over to his MacBook Pro or, or whatever he currently has, actually, and, oh, cool. and let him present um, on his own and then open it up for question and answer, too. I think having access to having a very fluid debate that way will be oh, fantastic nice. for us. That's really good. So you'll have, you'll have about 40 shorts or maybe more. Yeah. Uh, and by shorts, you mean like a minute? Or a couple minutes? They're probably anywhere between one minute and seven. Okay. Somewhere in there. The longest ones are probably six or seven minutes. So it's about a two and a half hour presentation. You'll have 40 or so shorts. And then you're going to end with the video remix artist, Jonathan McIntosh, and a question and answer session after that. Right. Uh And we'll also have Desiree Dale, Alessandro there. She's another remix artist. Do whatever you want. You're on your own. Who will be part of the uh, Q&A panel. And then, of course, Seth and Hannah Gravette will be coming up from San Diego to be present for that as well. Oh, and they're the Pico National Network archive people. Yes. But they'll also be there because the Pico thing is happening first part of the day, starting at noon. And right. then the video, the remix videos are happening the second part of the day of Saturday at starting at 4.30. Right. So if anybody wants to ask them questions about the Pico National Network uh-huh. installation, they'll be there to field those questions also. Okay, good. So, wow, you've got a lot going in. We're running out of time to talk about it. I'm um, glad we've gotten a lot of it in. Well, I wish we could talk more and more about... I love uh, your ideas about uh, art being rooted in illusion and how the illusion can kind of show us the truth or it can deceive us. You know, the the, the art of, of political propaganda or um, commercial propaganda is really designed just to deceive us. But hopefully art in a broader sense is... is is trying to illuminate uh, certain universal truths. Yeah. It's kind of the difference between Plato's noble lie and Nietzsche's creative lie. Uh-huh. You know, that Nietzsche would say that the lie produces the truth, but in the noble lie, it's kind of a lie that just stays in the realm of deception for the elites, um, what, what they conceive to be a better situation for everyone. So huh. that's a very, uh-huh. very rushed way of explaining it. But I do like that Nietzsche's way is kind of geared towards showing us deeper, more meaningful things through the illusion. And none of us are duped by it. It's obvious that yeah. th- this is an illusion. Well, thanks, Deron. I'm so uh, happy that you came and talked to us about all this. And Thank this you. is all happening at Gallery 25, January 29th and Saturday the 30th. And then you're going to have a, a, a re-screening on Sunday. Correct. Okay. Well, thanks, Deron. All right. Thank you very much for Good having talking me. talking to you. Yes. Bye, friends.